in November 1940, approximately 500 German bombers razed Coventry town centre to the ground. Much of the medieval town was destroyed, as was the cathedral, remaining only the west tower and the outside shell. It's a wonderful place to visit, very poignant. We both sat and thought and pondered the futility of war. It uh, really brings it home. The modern cathedral was consecrated in 1962 and we were absolutely bowled over by the beauty of the stained glass windows and the modern architecture. It was just uh, really wonderful to see. There's a massive tapestry altarpiece by Graham Sutherland and an outside modern sculpture by Jakob Epstein. We spent at least an hour and a half just milling about enjoying the peacefulness of it all. And fortunately we got to hear the organ play as well, which was a bonus. This is Coventry Basin. Uh, it was renovated, restored rather, about 20 odd years ago. And there's a few shops up there, but sadly a lot of them have gone. And uh, it's a little bit isolated from the rest of the city. But um, it's been nice staying here for three nights. And uh, there's the man himself, Mr. Brindley, up there.
Roses are called Cash's 100 and uh, originally in the 19th century 100 of them planned but only 48 got made uh, of which only 37 have remained and the idea was well it did work for a while that the top was the work hall where they had looms for making ribbon and driven by a steam engine run on pulleys and the workers lived in the quarters below and the two floors below so yeah really interesting architecture the junction of the Coventry Canal which takes us straight up to Nuneaton ahead and this is the Ashby Canal um, which five miles up there is Hinkley where we picked the boat up one year ago tomorrow and it seems really strange that we've come full circle seen so many things, done so many things, been so many places. We were going to go up the Ashby Canal um, but bridge number six is closed for renovation so we uh, can't get very far up there so we're going to come back and do it uh, pretty soon I think in about a month maybe we'll double back on ourselves. Pretty good three days we had in Coventry. We had a lovely time considering uh, we weren't even going to go down the, the Coventry Arm because we didn't want to do another big town or city. Mm. It was a real surprise. I'm so glad we did it. It was lovely. We were going to do it for that reason and then we thought, well, it's on the doorstep. We can't not just go down there and have a look. And it'd been a long, long time since I'd been in Coventry Cathedral. You hadn't been before. I'd never been, you? no. And I couldn't remember it and we went on... Uh, an iffy day, it was damp when we started out, but the sun came out when we were inside, it was absolutely stunning, uh, as uh, you've seen. The journey down wasn't wasn't inspiring particularly, no. was it? The canal itself um, wasn't that great, it was a little bit dirty, but the Full basin is lovely to moor in. Um, we were shocked a bit by the bright lights at night, weren't we? You were just <laughs> <laughs> so used to darkness now. Um, we, we kept awake at night because we had floodlights on us 24 hours a day. That was a bit difficult. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not good at all. So we've uh, been doing some calculations because it's been one year aboard now. Uh, unbelievably so. It's gone so quickly. And... Um, so we just come together with all the costings of... Uh... Yeah, people are always asking us how much it costs, how much various bits of it costs. So obviously there's a lot of variation and this is just what we have spent on our 50 foot boat in the last year. Well, fingers so, crossed we haven't missed anything out, I don't um, think we have. It's, no. Yeah, it's approximate figure. We've done 660 miles in this year, which is 13.7 miles per week. Um, and that's 624 locks, which is about one lock per mile. 624 mm. lux. No wonder the boat looks like it does. 
<laughs> crashing and banging in and out of locks. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still not much better now, am I? Paint works suffering <laughs> somewhat. But so that's what, 13, 13 and a half miles a week. That's uh, we don't crank it, do we? No, no, just take it easy. <laughs> and I think we're slower now than we were at the beginning. So oh, definitely. Yeah, because we? we we spend more time in one place than we used to at the beginning. We used to just get up and get out and get going, which we're not doing there. We just like to explore where we are a bit more. We were so keen to get everywhere in the beginning, weren't we? Chasing our tails, mm. but. Um, it's it's important to us to investigate and just enjoy the mm. surroundings around mm. so that was that as far as fuel is concerned we've spent 180 pound on gas which is purely for cooking nothing else no um heat or water or anything no, else it's just it's purely just for the cooker, for the cooker. Yeah. Um, which i think is pretty good actually 451 pound on diesel which works out at 68 pence per mile um, and again, we don't use that for anything else really, do we? We've got no diesel central heating. No, it's just propulsion. On here, and very rarely do we have that on just for power mm. or for electricity or anything, do we? We we hardly ever run the engine, do we, to uh, supplement the batteries? We did in the depths of winter when the days were really short, a um, couple of hours every other day at the most. But. Yeah. With our our attitude is well, if we've got to run the engine, we might as well move. Exactly. And yeah. uh, you know, run the engine that way. Even if it's just to put along for an hour or a couple of miles, Two hours, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's, it's fine. Um, so we've spent two hundred and forty-four pound on pump outs. Um, That's quite high, isn't it? That's a lot of money, isn't it, to get rid of your waste? We did say right at the beginning we were going to get rid of that toilet, didn't we? But. Yeah. It just seems we've discovered um, cheap biological laundry detergent works really, really well instead of the traditional blue or green that you put down the toilet. It's so much cheaper and so much more it's effective. It's tenth of the cost, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that we've decided at the moment it, the toilet change is definitely not a priority. It's no. all working fine. So, um, yeah, big shout out for cheap laundry detergent. It's, <laughs> it's brilliant. So, um, coal is £220 over the whole year, which obviously mm. is mainly, mainly over the winter period. And that would be a lot more than that if we weren't foraging for wood and cutting up wood. And uh, You've seen him cutting up that. wood on the videos, haven't yeah. you, once or twice? It's, it's, <laughs> uh, I think it would be double that. If we weren't using wood, we must use 50-50 wood yeah. and coal. Yeah. And we start the fire off with the wood, it gets, a, it gets it hot really quickly. And then we just put bits of coal on as and when, just top it up. Especially overnight, it just ticks it over, keeps it ticking over slowly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah mixture's good, isn't it, I think? Um, moorings, we haven't spent a lot on moorings because we always try and moor for free. It was really mainly on the Thames, on the wasn't it? We had system, to pay, yeah. um, and we spent £66 on mooring fee over the year. Obviously, continuous cruises, we're not paying residential moorings, which would mm. be a huge expense if you yeah. were doing that. Yeah. Um, as far as the boat license is concerned, our license was about £900, mm. um, the Canal and River Trust license, which covers us for the canals and some rivers, doesn't it? Um, but on top of that, we've had to then spend another £216 on river licences because we didn't plan properly. No, well, when we bought the boat, we didn't realise we'd be on rivers so quickly. We thought, oh, we'll just poodle around on the canals this first year but we quickly ended up on the River Thames didn't yeah. we? It's the Environment Agency that are the authority for the Thames uh, so we had to pay their extortionate rates. If you think you're going to travel everywhere then it's best to get a gold licence which covers you for everything, all the canals, all the rivers um, but we've ended up having to do it separately mm. yeah, so, so yeah that's it so that, oops <laughs> So in total, what is that? It's about eleven hundred pound in in river and canal licences yeah, in total. Yeah. Our boat insurance was one hundred and fifty pound last year. That's gone up a little bit now because we've got had to put traders insurance on there, and we've also put our contents insurance on there because they're no longer covered under our home insurance mm. policy. So our complete. Boat insurance is £250 this year, that's fully comprehensive everything, so mm. I don't think that's Include. too badly actually. <coughs> yeah. 
includes dropping a camera in the canal, which is an inevitable thing, I think, the way we uh, pan the cameras on the back of the canal while we're driving. And, uh, yes, uh, yes. We're not going to go into that one, are we? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. The total of that comes out to £2,427 over the year, which is £202.25 per month. So that's essential cruising. That is everything if you're a continuous cruiser as we are. Uh, so I guess it's going to be a lot more than that if you wanted to park your boat in a marina. Yeah. yeah. But £202 a month, that's not bad, is it? But your much? heating, your fuel, your... Um, yeah, heating, fuel, keeping warm, cooking, moving, mm -hmm. insuring, everything. That's really not bad. That's only a little bit more than your council tax would be if you were in a yeah, house, let yeah. alone everything else. Then, of course, you've got the cost of buying your boat on top of that. So, um, yeah, it's still cheaper than living on land and living in a house. It's got to be, isn't it? There's always mm. disputes and, and you'll hear boaters mm. saying, don't think it's cheap. I can't understand why people think it is definitely cheaper to live in your boat but it obviously just depends on your boat there's obviously maintenance costs as well for us we've spent um put the glasses yeah, there we, go. To see. we have spent 550 pound on essential repairs that was things like when the starter solenoid went um yeah and on top of that we had a 120 pound rescue cover and they did come out twice to us and helped mm. us out didn't they mm. but the other repairs were things that weren't covered by that that we had to spend um, and of course we've recently bought a new inverter, it's only a low cost budget inverter because uh, we don't use it a lot, we, we, we haven't got all the essential kitchen equipment that people, uh, other boaters use and that cost £135 didn't it for a, a new inverter yeah. so hopefully fingers crossed that will last us a year because the other one only lasted a year because I think Boatman Benjamin only recently put it in before we, um, yeah. before we bought the boat but other than that, it's just your living costs, and obviously that is different to everybody. You know, we've set ourselves a budget that we try to live on. Um, and as far as decorating the boat, that again is a personal thing. You could yeah. spend thousands just going through. We got quoted £7,000 to have a new bathroom at one yeah. point, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> so we could easily do the whole boat for that, for £7,000. So yeah, you mean, it's, it's, you. we haven't included food costs in there or entertainments or going to the pub, you know, because you can spend as much or as little as you want. So, um, yeah. yeah, well, that is our life aboard Constanza in the first year. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. If you're thinking about embarking on this sort of adventure, then it gives you a rough idea of what to work on. But... This is just us, and we are quite frugal, I think, aren't we, with things, really? Uh, we're quite frugal, yeah. <laughs> anyway, again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share, and uh, see you next time. Yep, see you soon. Bye. Cheers, bye.